Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Just another reminder, as we have uh, attendees trickling in, in the questions box, you'll see that we have shared a participation survey link. Please take a moment to fill that out as we're getting started. Okay, there's a question on where that is. I'll share that in just a second. Hello, everyone. I'm Wujiha Ibrahim with the Department of City Planning. We also have Jackie Furnejo. Hello. Welcome to our webinar. Um, uh, welcome to our webinar on the plan to house LA. Uh, this is the update to the City of LA's housing element. This is for the years 2021 to 2029. Today we'll be providing an overview of what the housing element is, we'll be walking through key concepts, and we'll present opportunities to provide feedback for this really important process that our city is currently undertaking. Um, today, we also have uh, Matt Glesny um, from City Planning and Claudia Monterosa from HCID. We also have Blair Smith, Callie Hardy, and Maya Abood, and Betty Barberina. Um, this is the rest of the Housing Element team, and they'll be available to answer questions during the Q&A session that's near the end of this webinar. We'll answer as many questions as possible during the time that we've allotted for Q&A, but if we see more questions coming in, we're happy to stay longer. Um, we really value this discussion that we're all going to have today. Um, so let's take a, a quick second to note the different parts of the GoTo Training Control Panel window. Um, for the questions coming in about where to access the participation, the participation survey, um, you can take a look at what you'll be seeing here. First and foremost, I want to note that all of you will be muted by default throughout this webinar. And again, we'll be taking questions in the, uh, the um, questions control panel that's shown right here with the blue arrows. And throughout the presentation, we really encourage and invite you to type in your questions and comments in this questions box. Um, we'll respond to these near the end uh, during the live Q&A. I also want to point out that there are additional materials available for you to access during the webinar through the handouts icon, also in the control panel. If you just click the name of the handouts, you can access it and a pop-up may appear asking if you'd like to view it automatically or download it. And that's, of course, totally up to you. So let's take a quick second to um, just see who's here with us today. Um, if you could, in the questions box, could you enter your name and the neighborhood that you call home um, or any group that you're affiliated with? Let's see who we've, we've got. Great. Wow. Thank you so much for this awesome number of attendees we've got with us today. Folks from Mar Vista, Atwater Village, Slauson Corridor. Rosa, Monica, Palms area, great. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Amazing, let's feel us. Great, welcome. Welcome. So before we begin, I, I do wanna take a moment to thank everyone for making out the time to be here and to participate, especially given the current circumstances. Our recent events, including COVID-19 and the civil unrest that we're facing, they've shed light on the racial inequalities in our communities and throughout the country. So we elected to postpone our June 2nd and 3rd webinars um, to June 16th and 17th, which is today's, out of respect for, for this larger dialogue that's currently underway across the nation and here in LA. 
the issues facing the country and the city of Los Angeles are so deeply intertwined with housing policy and the systemic racial inequality that the plan to house LA seeks to address. The update to the housing element is really an opportunity to look at how well the city has been doing and to identify solutions to, to further these principles of racial justice, to dismantle these structural inequalities of segregation and create more equitable and affordable housing opportunities for all. And that's why we're here. Um, in late February and early March, we began this public engagement process on the housing element update by holding a series of workshops. In today's webinar, we're, we're highlighting the same information that was presented at these workshops, and we're sharing with you how to best provide your feedback. You know, ideally, we would be going out to your neighborhood groups and meeting with you in person, but we're obviously opting for this virtual alternative platform um, to share information in, in light of the current COVID-19 pandemic. So this brings us to our agenda today. Um, first, we'll begin by providing an overview of what the housing element update of 2021 to 2029 is. Um, and we'll talk about the, what the plan to house LA and the update process will look like. We'll also be providing background information on the current state of housing in LA. We will review the current 2013-2021 housing element to understand what we're working with. And before we wrap up, we'll share a platform where you can offer even more detailed input and help us share this information. And after reviewing these elements, we'll reserve time for um, a Q&A session with the additional staff that I introduced earlier from the Department of City Planning and from HCID. Now I'll pass it off to Jackie to get us started. Thanks, Wajia. So before we get into, <clears throat> into details, we want to provide a little context about the current landscape of housing policy in the city. The lead agencies for the housing element update are the Department of City Planning and the, Department, and the Housing and Community Investment Department. There are also several agencies that plan and regulate housing in Los Angeles, and we all work together on the housing element update. Uh, the Department of City Planning um, oversees land use and zoning at the city-wide level, as well as a community plan and project level. Uh, the Housing and Community Investment Department, or HCID, um, oversees both the programmatic and funding elements of affordable housing policies for the city, including the enforcement of our rent stabilization ordinance and the financing of affordable housing projects. Our Housing Authority, or HACLA, oversees public housing and administers the Housing Choice Voucher Program, commonly known as Section 8, for low-income residents. And finally, the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, or LASA, oversees homeless services and emergency shelter operations, as well as administering rental vouchers for formerly unhoused residents in the city. The housing element is one of 11 current general plan updates for Los Angeles. The general plan sets high level citywide policy and vision. Because Los Angeles is so large, uh, we have five, we have 35 community plans that make up the land use element of the general plan. Each community plan includes zoning, which details what can be built on an individual parcel, as well as policies and goals specific to that geographic area. City planning is currently working to, uh, to update all community plans and the general plan with 16 active community plan updates. The general plan, community plans, land use, and zoning designations are all fundamental ways the city works to address housing and community needs throughout Los Angeles. HCID is also currently working to update the consolidated plan, which details how federal funding will be spent to meet goals set by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for the creation of affordable housing, assistance to small businesses, and people living with HIV and AIDS. HCID also takes the lead on the assessment of fair housing, which is required under federal law, and identifies fair housing barriers and develops strategies to ensure housing access for all. To that end, 
the goals, objectives, policies, and programs identified in the housing element, consolidated plan, and the assessment of fair housing will be integrated as much as possible to ensure that the city has a cohesive and unified vision for housing and community development. So let's begin by walking through what is a housing element and why the city of LA is updating its plan. Housing elements were established by the state of California in 1969 as a mandatory part of the general plan. The state requires that jurisdictions do their fair share to plan for adequate affordable housing. These requirements recognize that housing is a critical need and that the government and private sector must work together to address the needs of all residents. These principles stem from the Fair Housing Act, adopted following the advocacy of the civil rights movements of the 1960s. The act prohibits housing discrimination based on race, color, religion, national origin, sex, disability, family status, sexual orientation, gender identity, source of income, medical condition, age, genetic information, ancestry, and marital status. A new requirement for this cycle is that the housing element must affirmatively further fair housing. This means that the housing element must proactively seek to advance the goals of the Fair Housing Act and reduce racially and ethnically concentrated poverty and disparities to, in access to opportunity. So what's in the housing element update? So the housing element identifies the city's housing conditions and needs. It also establishes the goals, objectives, and policies to meet those needs. Under state law, the housing element must be updated every eight years. The housing element update, also known as the plan to house LA, will cover the years 2021 to 2029 and must also include an inventory of sites zoned with sufficient capacity to accommodate future housing needs. Non-compliance can result in penalties from the state, including the loss of state funding for transportation, housing and infrastructure, all critical needs for our city. The updated will be guided by a vision where we can establish the aim of what our city would look like and feel like if we met all, all of our housing goals. The update will look into our housing landscape and needs to determine what our housing needs are, including who is served by the housing stock, how well they are being served, and who isn't. The update will analyze existing resources and constraints by evaluating if the city has the right planning requirements, known as land use and zoning, to meet its housing needs. We will also look at our existing affordable housing stock and what needs to be preserved. And we will look at what is stopping us from achieving our housing goals. Finally, we will create an action plan of the goals, policies, and implementation programs to help us realize our vision. So over the next two years, city planning and the Housing and Community Investment Department will use your input and suggestions to assess the city's housing needs, list existing constraints and resources, and make an action plan to achieve the city's collective vision for housing. Here we lay out a timeline for achieving key milestones starting this winter through the adoption in the summer of 2021. As you can see here, there are many opportunities throughout the update process to provide feedback and help shape the city's vision and plan for housing. We are currently in the vision phase of outreach where we craft our vision for the plan to house LA. Our next phase of outreach in the fall will include concepts for the plan, followed by the release of the draft plan in winter 2021 and with adoption in summer 2021. And now I'll pass it uh, back to Wajia. Thanks. Okay, is everyone still with us? Before diving into the goals and objectives for the housing element update, let's just take a quick second to, to take stock of the state of housing and the factors that determine costs, needs, and priorities. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Los Angeles, we know, is a city of renters with over 63% of residents 
living in housing units in the city that they do not own. Um, LA also has an aging housing stock with a significant percentage of housing units that were built before 1960. So while it may seem like LA has experienced a building boom over the past few years, um, in reality, only 25% of the housing units in LA were built after 1980. So it's really important to adequately respond to the evolving needs of LA's growing population over the last several decades. One of the primary purposes of the housing element, which is why we're all here today, is, is to ensure that the city plans for enough housing to meet its current and its future needs. And to assess this, we need to understand population growth. Los Angeles has continued to grow, and it's projected to continue with this trend in the coming decades. And of that increasing population, we see that older adults increase excuse me, we see that older adults account for a growing share of the city's population, and the share of children is actually declining. This reflects who has access to the opportunity to afford to live in the city, and it also indicates that families with younger children are increasingly, increasingly unable to find adequate housing in the city. Let's take a look at vacancy rates. Um, Vacancy rates is one of several factors that are used to evaluate the health and direction of the housing market. Low vacancy rates can be a sign of a tight housing market, meaning there's way more demand than there is supply. And overall, the LA region actually has one of the lowest vacancy rates in the country at 3.9%. Um, which is a key reason why we're seeing that finding affordable and adequate housing is becoming harder and harder for residents. It's also helpful to look at how much land is available in the city of Los Angeles and uh, for what types of use. So approximately 57% of land in LA allows for residential uses. Of that, approximately 70% allows for single family homes, and 30% allows for multifamily development, such as you know, condos or rental apartments. Almost six in 10 renters in LA struggle to afford rent. And this is a term that we call being rent burdened. Um, it means that, that they spend way more than a third of their monthly earnings on housing. To understand household costs, what we really need to look at is how much people, how much money people in our region make, and then how much money they spend on housing. And in LA, these two factors do not align. Um, in Los Angeles, we earn like Cleveland, but we pay rent like New York City, meaning Angelinos are spending way more on housing than we can afford. Um, housing affordability is a big challenge for most major cities today. However, Los Angeles has a higher percentage of cost burden than any other major American city. Almost half of our households spend more than a third of their income on rent. So not surprisingly, this means that home ownership is out of reach for most people. Um, in, in 2018, the median home sale price was 9.4 times the average household income in LA. It's also really important to point out that these burdens are not felt equally across all populations. Uh, women and people of color are most affected with Latino and Black or African American women experiencing the highest rate of rent burden in the city. Um, the high cost of housing, it's, it's resulted in people being unable to remain in their homes. There are over 27,000 unsheltered homeless persons within LA, the vast majority of them being Black or African American and Latino. Similarly, some populations experience greater challenges securing family supporting wages and adequate housing access that could result in a greater likelihood of experiencing homelessness or even struggling to pay rent. Let's start to think about these housing types. Um, I'll let Jackie carry that further. Thanks, Vajia. 
there is a huge need for affordable housing in this city. So you may be wondering what affordable even means. Housing is considered affordable if a household is not cost burden, meaning a household is spending less than 30% of its income on housing costs. While some households can find affordable housing at the market rate, many need access to a unit that is deed restricted at an affordable cost by income level. The cost of a deed restricted affordable housing unit varies depending on the size of the household and total income. There are four categories of affordability which are based off of a percentage of the area median income, also known as AMI. Uh, in LA, that area median income or AMI is approximately $70,000. So households qualify as extremely low income if they earn 30% of the AMI. Households can qualify as very low income if they earn between 30% and 50% of the AMI. Households qualify as low income if they earn between 50 and 80% of the AMI. And households qualify as moderate income if they earn between 80% and 120% of the AMI. So you may be wondering how to go about finding affordable housing. Here we list resources by phone and on our city website. You can also text a number listed here to find out if you live in a unit protected by our rent stabilization ordinance or rent control, which we will go into in a second. So here we'll explain a little bit about the various types of affordable housing. And affordable housing is managed and produced by both the public and private sectors. So there are five key housing types. Public housing is owned and operated by a local housing authority such as HACLA. Today, units total 7,000 units. And this type of housing is owned and operated by the city and was mostly built in the 1940s and 50s. Jordan Downs in Watts and Ramona Gardens in Bull Heights are examples of public housing developments. The size of the development varies. Some newer developments may include both affordable and market rate units. There's supportive housing, which integrates social services into affordable housing, providing support for people with disabilities, addiction, or mental health issues, including those who are formerly homeless, exiting institutional settings, and veterans. These types of developments can be built publicly or privately, usually by nonprofit organizations that manage the housing after the construction. There's deed restricted housing, which is typically publicly financed but privately built and managed by a for profit or nonprofit um, affordable housing developer. Most deed restricted affordable housing developments have long term, uh, typically 55 year affordability requirements. Then there are rent stabilized units. Uh, the public sector um, or the city of LA also regulates the over 620,000 housing units that are protected by uh, our rent stabilization ordinance or RSO. And the new state anti-rent gouging law, AB 1482. These units are not necessarily affordable since the starting rents are not restricted. However, tenants who live in these units are protected from exorbitant rent increases and arbitrary evictions. Lastly, there are rent subsidies and vouchers. Uh, the government funds vou housing vouchers that are, allow a tenant, uh, a qualified tenant to rent a market rate unit using a rent subsidy that covers the difference between the asking rent and the rent affordable to a low income tenant. Most of this funding comes from the federal government and is administered by the city. Most affordable housing has been created through public subsidies administered by the state and federal government. However, due to budget cuts, there has been significantly less funding for affordable housing in recent years. Since 2012, you can see there have been major reductions in sources of funding for affordable housing. In response to these cuts, uh, City Council approved the Affordable Housing Linkage Fee Program, which was phased in beginning in uh, 2018. The Affordable Housing Linkage Fee Ordinance places a fee on market rate residential and commercial developments that are not exempt from the ordinance, including projects that do not provide affordable units. 
These funds are then used for affordable housing construction and preservation. In light of the dramatic economic impacts of COVID-19, we are entering a period of uncertainty with potential reductions in state and federal funding for affordable housing. As such, we will need to continue to identify solutions for the production and preservation of affordable housing. While funding for the, affordable, for the construction of affordable housing has declined, the production of affordable housing has increased. There are two primary ways affordable housing is currently developed in the city. The first indicated in light blue is through public subsidies in which a developer uh, applies for funding and tax credits from government and private sources. The second indicated in dark blue is through land use incentives where a developer building a market rate project agrees to include some affordable units in exchange for an incentive, like the ability to build more units or a taller building. As you can see, the use of land use incentives has been steadily on the rise in recent years. You may be wondering where these units are. And as you can see in the map, the majority of affordable units built over the last decade have been built in the denser communities of the city, such as Hollywood, Wilshire, and downtown. This is largely consistent with where we are seeing development in the city. That said, affordable housing has yet to reach all neighborhoods. This is due to a variety of factors, including lack of developable land, lack of funding for affordable housing, the lack of community support, and lack of land zone for multifamily housing. You may be wondering how much housing does the city need to plan for? With, within this, housing element update, LA must plant for approximately 460,000 units of which half or approximately 260,000 are for affordable, are intended to be affordable for those with lower incomes. This number is determined by the Southern California Association of Governments or SCAG through a regional housing needs assessment allocation or RINA allocation. The RINA allocation was changed significantly by recent state legislation. The RINA now requires cities to account for what is known as existing need or the deficit in housing that has accumulated over the years and is evidenced by rates of overcrowding and people paying too much for housing. This is in addition to projected needs, which includes factors like new births, people moving here for new jobs, and so on. The RINA allocation for this cycle is more than five times higher than the last cycle. And again, this is largely a result of these changes to state law. So what do these numbers really mean? As part of the housing element update, we must identify enough multifamily sites or lots currently available for the development of this 460,000 unit target. This is known as a site selection process or inventory of sites. In addition to identifying sites, we must also report on our annual progress to meet these numbers. In our current cycle, we have exceeded our goals for market rate units, but have missed the mark on producing our affordable units. So how much housing do we need to plan for? For us to reach our estimated RINA target, Los Angeles would need to permit an average of 57,000 units each year, including 33,000 affordable units per year. Therefore, it is important for us to take a step back to review the current housing element to assess how we as a city will develop the goals, objectives, policies, and programs to reach these targets. And I will pass it back to Wigia. Thanks, Jackie. So yeah, let's do just that. Um, let's move on to reviewing the existing housing element. The city is required to update the housing element every eight years. And our current housing element was adopted in 2013 and it's meant to provide guidance through the year 2021. The goals and policies of our current element, they provide a strong foundation for this update. So we wanna spend some time reviewing them as we begin our update process. An important foundation is the vision for the housing element. And our current vision reads as follows. 
It is the overall housing vision of the city of Los Angeles to create for all residents a city of livable and sustainable neighborhoods with a range of housing types, sizes, and costs in proximity to jobs, amenities, and services. In keeping with decades of federal housing acts and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that declared housing as a human right, the city will work towards ensuring that housing is provided to all residents. So to, to reach our housing vision, the housing element is comprised of goals, which represent a general expression of community values and direction, and, and these are expressed as ends, not necessarily actions. Objectives, which are concrete steps towards attaining a goal. Policies, which are specific statements that guide decision making and help us implement a vision. And finally, programs, which are specific actions that are assigned to a responsible agency that will accomplish an objective. There are four overarching goals for the current housing element of years 2013 to 2021. The first goal reads, a city where housing production and preservation results in an adequate supply of ownership and rental housing that is safe, healthy, and affordable to people of all income levels, races, ages, and is suitable for their various needs. The second goal reads, a city in which housing helps to create safe, livable, and sustainable neighborhoods. Goal three, a city where there are housing opportunities for all without discrimination. And finally, goal four, a city that is committed to preventing and ending homelessness. Let's, let's take a few minutes to review each goal and its corresponding objectives, policies, and programs. And again, while this is not an exhaustive list, each goal includes some examples of current policies and programs. So the first goal is to produce and preserve sufficient housing that meets the needs of all residents. And in order to meet this goal, the city has developed objectives, policies, and programs to reduce barriers and, and provide financial incentives where possible to promote the production and the preservation of a diverse, safe, and healthy and affordable housing stock. This goal and these objectives are supported by policies and programs that include expanding affordable home ownership opportunities, expanding affordable renter, affordable rental housing for all income groups, expanding residential development opportunities near transit-oriented districts or along mixed-use boulevards, um, and developing financial resources for the construction, for new construction of affordable housing and facilitating innovative models that reduce the cost of housing production. I see a lot of questions coming in um, in the question uh, tab, but I, I do want to remind everyone once again to, to continue to top, type in your, your thoughts on these goals and objectives and um, share any potential programs that you think should be added to encourage you know, production and preservation. Um, here are some specific examples um, that LA has adopted to increase the production of affordable housing. Um, the first is a permanent supportive housing and interim motel conversion ordinance of 2018. This allows hotels and motels to be uh, repurposed as transitional and supportive housing to serve people that were previously unhoused. And it also streamlines the production of that uh, permanent supportive housing. There's also the affordable housing linkage fee, also of 2018. Um, this is what Jackie referenced earlier. It places a fee on residential and commercial developments that do not provide affordable units. And this fee generates local funding for affordable housing production and preservation. Uh, Los Angeles also adopted the home sharing ordinance uh, to ensure that permanent housing is not being converted to short-term rentals. And a revision of the rent stabilization ordinance or the RSO ordinance was also adopted to strengthen tenant protection. The second goal relates to building safe, livable and sustainable neighborhoods. This goal is supported by objectives, policies, and programs that promote 
sustainable neighborhoods that will lessen impacts on natural resource consumption and direct growth towards job centers and transit and uh, employing green building techniques. This goal and these objectives are also supported by policies and programs that uh, provide incentives to integrate housing with other compatible land uses, such as near transit centers. Um, they also promote environmentally sustainable building construction and livable neighborhoods with a mix of housing styles, quality design, and scale that is compatible with the unique neighborhoods that make up the character of, of Los Angeles. And one more reminder, please continue to, to type in your questions um, in the questions box as we think about these policies and programs. Here are some uh, examples of specific programs that LA has adopted to support the goal to build safe, livable, and sustainable neighborhoods. One example is the Accessory Dwelling Unit Ordinance, or the ADU Ordinance, that's uh, built off of recent state legislation to allow new rental units in the backyards of single-family and multifamily homes. Sometimes these are referred to as granny flats or in-law units, which you might be familiar with that terminology. Um, finally, a new set of citywide design guidelines were also adopted to encourage the development of projects to be, to to be oriented towards pedestrians and to respond to the local area context and consider the city's climate and urban environment. The third goal um, relates the need to, sorry, we're one slide behind. Let me move that forward. There we go. Um, the third goal relates the need to protect against housing discrimination and provide equal housing opportunities. As discussed earlier, this goal is a requirement of the state and a requirement of federal fair housing laws. Um, it, this goal is supported by objectives, policies, and programs that facilitate access to equal housing opportunities by promoting responsible community lending, um, encouraging education about fair housing practices, and also collecting and reporting data on housing discrimination complaints. This goal and uh, objectives, they're supported by policies and programs that make housing an equitable resource for all. Here are some uh, specific programs that our city has adopted to support this goal to provide housing opportunities for all without discrimination. Um, the, city the city of LA has contracted with the Housing Rights Center, or HRC, to enforce fair housing complaints for the last 15 years for a citywide fair housing program. Another example is um, that the contract with HR HRC, it's been expanded to include new protections for renters with rental assistance vouchers, and that there have been several efforts to update the RSO ordinance and enforce AB 1482. Um, the, the Source of Income Anti-Discrimination Ordinance was also adopted in 2019, and Governor Newsom signed SB 329 into law, effective January 1st of this year. All right, I will let Jackie continue on with the last goal. Great, thanks. The fourth goal emphasizes the city's goal to prevent and end homelessness. This goal is supported by objectives, policies, and programs that seek to see every unhoused individual and family housed uh, by preventing vulnerable populations from becoming unhoused in the first place and by rapidly rehousing those who fall into homelessness. This goal has two key objectives, provide an adequate supply of short-term and permanent housing and services throughout the city that are appropriate and meet the specific needs of all persons who are unhoused or at risk of being unhoused. The second one is to promote outreach education to unhoused populations, residents, community stakeholders, health, social service, and housing providers and funders criminal justice system agencies, and communities in which facilities and services may be located. 
These objectives seek to provide enough short-term and permanent housing and services for all in need, and to connect and educate both unhoused populations and the general public. Beyond the city's efforts to provide housing and services to those who are currently unhoused, the city also focuses on targeting resources to individuals at risk of becoming unhoused, including those with various degrees of special needs. These policies and programs to achieve this goal also strive to remove barriers to siting housing for unhoused persons throughout the city. Here are some examples of specific program specific programs that LA has adopted to support the goal of preventing and ending homelessness. In 2016, Los Angeles voters approved measure HHH, a $1.2 billion bond to build supportive housing for unhoused residents and residents at risk of becoming unhoused throughout the city. And as of December 2019, measure HHH has expanded $1 billion to fund the development of 112 projects, including a little over 7,000 total housing units, of those, about 5,700 are supportive housing units and about 1,500 are affordable units. So we have a poll for, for all of you today. Um, and we wanted to see if, uh, if, if you agree with these goals. Great, we'll give it a few more seconds while we let people participate. All right, I will close the poll. So great, so about 86% of you who participated agree with the goals we laid out today. Thanks uh, for participating. So you can see here, um, we, be, we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar that this is intended to be a participatory process um, in which we gather input and feedback from residents and stakeholders. We have developed an online workshop in which you can participate at your own leisure and pace where you can review in detail the goals and objectives of the current housing element and data we have analyzed for this process. This online workshop includes several opportunities for you to share your input and feedback. We want you to weigh in on how relevant these goals, policies, and objectives of the current housing element are and how we can improve them for this update. So here we show some examples of what the virtual workshop essentially looks like, where you can answer questions related to each of the goals. So thank you again for being so engaged during this presentation and submitting your questions and comments in the questions box. Um, now that you know how important the housing element is and what a critical role you play, we want uh, we hope that you will be able to help get others involved and spread the word um, and asking friends to attend these and future webinars. Um, you can also sign up for our mailing list and attend a virtual workshop.